All right, so lots of you guys have been asking about our dashboard. You've been seeing it in various videos over the last couple of weeks and couple of months. And loads of you have been asking how I did it, what the dashboard is, what theme I use, and how to actually build it within Home Assistant. So I thought today it would be fun to actually do a tour of our mobile dashboard that we use for Home Assistant so you can get some inspiration and some ideas for your own dashboard too. Now, I will mention that this is not a how-to video or a how-to guide on how to build this specific dashboard, but you will get some inspiration and some ideas for your own dashboards. And in the next video, hopefully next week, we will do a guide on how to build a mobile dashboard and you can get really similar, similar results to the dashboard that I have here. So today is just a tour, but there will be a how-to guide coming. I will also release the YAML file or the code for this dashboard so that you can use it in your own dashboards too. So you can get a pretty identical thing. Um, I will release that when I get time to actually finish it. It's a little bit rough at the moment and not really ready for anyone else to use. I also need to remove like personal information and things like that. But that code will be coming at some point whenever I get time to finish it, just to get ahead because I know you guys will all ask how to do it. With that said, let's jump in and let's take a look at our dashboard. Oh, I should also mention that this is our mobile dashboard only. So everything you're seeing here is just the, the, the dashboard that we use on our mobiles. We do have a different dashboard for on tablets and on uh, computers. If you're interested in seeing that, then make sure to drop a comment below and perhaps we'll cover that one in a different video. Okay, so this is the theme I'm actually using or the dashboard that I'm using. It's called Minimalist or Lovelace Minimalist, whatever you want to call it. And it's by a user called T-Ben or it was started by a user called T-Ben. And then since then it's kind of grown and advanced into something a lot more fully functional. So there's tons of built-in cards that you can use for placing the stock cards in Home Assistant. And there's also tons of custom cards that have also been submitted by the community. This is the GitHub page for it here. So it's you'll see it's called UI Lovelace Minimalist. There's various screenshots. The thing I like about it is that it, there's tons of custom cards that you can use to do pretty much anything you want. And it also works on light mode as well as dark mode. And that automatically switches over whenever you change from light mode or dark mode or whoever is using it. I also like just how simple it is to use. Once you get your head around some of the concepts, it is actually really simple to implement. And even I was able to create a lot of custom cards to sort of fit my needs and fit the devices that I actually have. So that's why I really like this dashboard. And a lot of you guys have been asking about it too. This is the home screen for the dashboard. This is the first page that opens. But let me show you the, the, the sort of overall layout first. So at the top, we have sort of navigation and a welcome message. And then we have our people card right below that. And then below that is a, a list of all the rooms as well as their sort of functionality. You get a quick glance at the temperature as well as lights and you can tap into any of the rooms to get more information about the devices and sensors in those rooms. So at the very top of the home page, we have this welcome card that has, it says, it'll give you a welcome message. So good afternoon or good morning, whatever time it detects it is, it will sort of change the message as well as whoever is logged in. So you get a nice sort of personalized message. Up at the top, you've got an up arrow and a down arrow, which you can toggle and that'll hide the navigation if you want to. Next to that is sort of a quick glance at the temperature. So it gives you the date as well as what the weather is like for that day. And then on the right of that is a cog that you can tap into and it'll take you into home assistant configuration. Just sort of like a quick navigation to, to quickly bring you into the settings, which I do really like. Then under that, we have five buttons for navigation. So we've got home, lights, security, lab, or we've got two labs. It's just I haven't came up with the second or the, the last button I want to put in there. So that's kind of still a work in progress. But this, this is a custom card. So this card is in the Lovelace Minimalist website. So I'll just show you that. And it's called the Welcome Scenes card. The thing about that card is that you can, it's for actually toggling different scenes in your house. So like if you have a morning scene, a night scene, and sort of a movie watching scene, those type of things, they would normally be up there. I don't really use scenes too much in Home Assistant, so I took this card and sort of adapted it to work for navigation. So I could have different views instead of using scenes. So I will upload this card. I'm gonna contribute it back to the 
repository so that anyone can use it. It just does need a little bit of tidying up first before I can sort of put that back in. But that card should be available for you. I'll try and make it available for you so that you guys can use it as well if you want to have navigation instead of scene. The next card under that is our people card. Normally there would be two people cards here, but this is a custom card. So Minimalist does have a card in the main repository for person. And you can click on that and it will say here or away or work, wherever you are. And that's kind of it. But there is also a custom card. I'll just show you that one. Yeah, so there's, there's this custom car, card also called person and it gives you a little bit of ad, more advanced functionality. So that is this card here if you guys also want to use it. And you can see that when I tap into it, you get a bit more information. So it does show you a map of your location or where the person is. Obviously, I'm at home just now. And then a really nice feature of this card is this find my phone button. When you press it, it's actually going to start playing a notification to let you know where your phone is. So that's actually really useful if you happen to have lost your phone and someone else has access to your dashboard, they can press that and it will automatically come through. That notification will actually also break through if you have do not disturb on. So I've got do not disturb on right now, but it still comes through that and plays a notification sound so that it will always work regardless of if you have do not disturb on or if you have it on loud, whatever. So I really like that functionality and that's actually super simple to use with just a basic script. So that is the card I am using for person. And then back on the main screen, we have our room card. So I have a, a card set up for each room in the house that has controls in it. And you'll see we get two per line and they're broke out into these little mini rectangles. And the thing I like about these cards is that it gives you a glance into the temperature of that room, as well as the status of the main light in that room. And you can also toggle the main light from this card without ever having to jump into it. So if I toggle the living room lamp, that will come on and show. The card actually turns yellow so the, the you can instantly see if the light is on in that room. And if you want further controls, then if you tap anywhere else in that card, so if you just tap into the, the card itself, you can jump into the navigation for that room where it shows you the rest of the devices and sensors in that room. And you can build them out to give you a lot more information than you would get on that main page. So I really like splitting devices and sensors out into a room by room basis. I know some people like to group sensors and devices based on what the sensor is or what the device is. I prefer having the room and jumping into a view of that room. I think that makes a lot more sense to me, but you can do it on a device and a sensor by sensor basis if that's what you prefer. So you can see at the top, I've got a graph on either side for temperature and humidity, and that gives you a super simple glance into what the temperature and humidity in that room is and what the sort of historical trend is. And you can click on them and get more information. And then right below that, I have a title that says devices. And then I group all of my devices for that room under here. So we've got the lamps, the TV, sofa, table lights, and all of those controls. We've also got some speakers, media players, and the curtain controls. So there's all of our devices for that living room. And then below there, we have our sensors. So typically I'll have the devices at the top and then the sensors listed below. And then we have sort of motion sensors, uh, door sensors, anything like that that is in the room, then they will be added there. We've got the air quality sensor as well. And we've also got on the right hand side, we've got the uh, corresponding battery percentages for those devices, just so we can have a quick glance to make sure that nothing has actually ran out of battery in that room. Let's take a closer look at those devices. So the light card that we have at the top, this is one of the built in cards into minimalist. There's quite a different few different options with the light cards. They've got quite a lot of functionality in them, but you can see as I tap on it, it will actually expand to give you brightness control. So I can go like this and change the brightness on it to whatever you want. And then when you tap it, it will just go back off again. And if you want to get more information, then you can tap on the actual icon itself and then you are able to change the color temperature and the color and things like that. So that is the light card and you'll see it does the same for the TV. This is the ambi light that's in that room. And you'll see that the color of the card actually changes depending on the color that is being shown on the lamp. So if I click on the lamp and change that to a red, for example, and then we head back to our main screen, it actually changes the color of the card to match. You can turn that functionality off and just have them all the same color if you want to. I just kind of like having the, the color changer on there. So those are our light cards for this room. And then below that we have our media cards. So on the left, the living room TV, that's a Chromecast card. 
and on the right is a Google Home speaker. And then below that we have our curtains. So these allow you to have a slider that you can change the position of the curtains and then sort of open and close them and have quick toggles to those curtains as well. Let's go into one of the other rooms. So let's go into this room, which is the office. And again, yeah, you'll see that those light cards, so that light behind me, I can adjust the, the brightness and that will change the brightness there. And you'll see again is the color of the card matches what the actual color of the light is. And again, we can change down that desk light and turn it on. And we have our blinds in here as well. So I can change the percentage of the blind and it will actually start opening. So those are just really quick controls to, to sort of change everything in here. The other thing that we have, so we have this office display back here. So that's a Google Home Hub. And you can also control the volume on that from these little sliders as well, which is nice. The thing I kind of aim for with this dashboard is to never have anything more than sort of one tap away. You'll have your main navigation, you'll have maybe one tap to get into a room and then you'll be able to instantly control the devices in that room. So I didn't want to have anything that was sort of more than one or two taps away from the user. Super easy. If things are complicated and hard to find then they don't get used. You'll also notice up at the top we have our back arrow and that takes us back to the main page. And then the only other thing that I haven't covered is these navigation buttons at the top. So we have home in here. We have our shopping list, dairy liquid. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we just need to pick up some dairy liquid. So yeah, at the top we have our thermostat card. This will change color depending on if the house is actually heating, it will change to an orange color so that you know instantly that the, the house is actually trying to reach a certain temperature. And you can quickly change the thermostat from here with the plus and minus button. So you'll see there that it's changed orange as soon as I change the temperature. So we'll set that back down. Underneath that, so this, this page is probably the one I have not fully completed yet. You'll see that we have a bin collection date. We also have the NAS storage that doesn't belong in there anymore. So I need to remove that. And then below that, we have our shopping list. Basically, we can go in and just add any items that we need to get when we go to the shops. And as soon as we get to the shops, it'll pop up asking if we want to open our shopping list. Click on the yes button and it'll take us into here where we can see anything that we actually need to get for the house. So this page is basically anything that is a house control or a house sensor. So heating for the whole house or shopping for the house, that kind of thing, they all belong in the house section. If we go into lights, then this is basically just a quick overview or a quick control for every single light that is in the house, just in case you're for some reason not able to find it in one of the others. Up at the top, it does tell you how many lights are on in total. So if I turn off some of these other lights, you'll see it should go down to zero lights on. And then as soon as I turn one on, the the total number of lights will actually change. So that's just a quick bit of information so you can glance at and see how many lights are on at one time. Back on the homepage under the security tab, we have our page that houses all of our security sensors, the CCTV cameras and the alarm functionality. So up at the top, we have our alarm card. It's set to, the alarm is obviously set to disarm at the moment because we're home. You can quickly arm the alarm from this page. And if the alarm is set, the card will automatically expand to include a keypad so that you can put in the code and disarm the alarm from this page here. This is a custom card that's not included in the minimalist GitHub. I just found it in a form post on the Home Assistant form. I'll try and drop a link for this card if you want to use it in your own one down in the description. Sorry, I don't know the, the name of the person who made this card off the top of my head, but I will leave it in the link down below. Underneath those, we have our camera cards. So basically a quick view into the front camera and the back garden cameras where you can tap in and then see them full screen. And then we just have a list of all of our other motion sensors that are around the house, as well as our door sensors beneath that. So basically similar to the light page, it's just basically a quick glance at all of the cards that we have on here. If we go back and then click on our final navigation, which is the lab, this is a page that I've been working on a lot recently. If you follow me on Twitter, I've been posting my stuff over there as I've been sort of developing them. But this is basically anything that is home network or anything to do with servers, anything like that, that is all added into the lab page. So the first card on this page is our OpenSense card. And this is sort of the first custom card that I ever did 
in, minim in Minimalist. And again, I am gonna contribute this card back to the main repository so that you guys can all use it. But I'm really happy with how this card turned out considering I did it. <laughs> so at the top, we have our Open Sense or PF Sense card where I'm basically pulling in information from our firewall, how long it's been up for, if there's any updates available, the status of it. And then we've got two graphs. One on the left is for memory usage and then the one on the right is for disk usage. Underneath there, we have the status of our WAN. So that is basically a quick glance card so that you can see if the internet is up or down. As if the internet did go down, then that card would change to red so you can see it easily at a glance so that you knew the internet wasn't working. Below that, we have four icons. So the two on the left are for the current download utilization and current upload utilization. And then we have the status of two VPN connections. So I've got two VPN connections at this house, one to another property and one to private internet access, which I use. And basically they're just quick glances to make sure that those links are actually up and working. And then the two, the download speed and the upload speed below that. So we have speed tests running every couple of hours. And basically that just shows the status of the last speed test so that we know that the internet is actually functioning or working properly like it should be. Underneath that, we have a similar card. So this is for my Proxmox installation that I have at this house. And again, I just kind of copied a similar format from my first custom card, the OpenSense card. And it sort of shows the status, if it's online or if it's degraded or something similar, not functioning as it should. Shows the uptime and it shows if there is any updates available. And then this time I just decided to go for four graphs, which I thought were the most important, at least for what I use it for. So we've got CPU usage, memory usage, the local data store size and the VM data store size. So that just makes sure that all of the resources aren't being overutilized and there isn't a problem, something going on or a potential issue with Proxmox. I do have a lot more information I want to add. So I want to add some buttons that allows me to restart VMs or stop VMs if I want to do that. And as well as showing the status of those VMs. So hopefully I'll get that done at some point and add it in here also. And then below that, we have our status of TrueNAS, which is the NAS that I use at this house. I love TrueNAS. I've done videos on TrueNAS in the past. And yeah, that's my daily driver as a NAS solution. And again, similar sort of format. We've got status, uptime, and if there is updates available. And then for here, I just decided to put in CPU usage as well as how full the storage is on that NAS. Again, I want to add a lot more cards in here. So I want to add buttons for stopping and starting the Docker containers that are on that NAS, which I think is a really useful functionality to just be able to do that all from Home Assistant. So those are kind of the three custom cards I've done for my install. Again, I'm gonna contribute them when I get time to do that. So don't worry, those will be coming. I'm really happy with how those cards turned out and actually learned a lot about doing custom cards and how, to, how, how they actually work and how they hang together by copying or following a lot of the other examples done on Minimalist. It's actually really easy to follow sort of when you get your head around it and it is really fun. You can come up with your own cards and sort of lay things out exactly how you want them. Okay, so that is a look at how we lay out our home assistant dashboard hopefully this gave you some good ideas of how you can lay out your dashboard too if you were maybe struggling for inspiration hopefully this gave you some good ideas or perhaps you want to do something completely different and this uh, let you know how not to do a home assistant dashboard either way hope it gave you some good inspiration and some good ideas of how you can do your dashboard like I mentioned, the next video that we're gonna do, hopefully next week, there will be a video on how to actually create this dashboard so that you can replicate it and get something pretty similar to what we've got here if you are interested in doing that. Because I know a lot of you guys have been asking how to do dashboards and it's sort of a very difficult or technical challenge for a lot of you guys to do dashboards. So hopefully we'll do a guide next week on how to do that. So make sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss that when it does come out. Anyways, hopefully you did enjoy this video. Make sure to drop it a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video. That was good. Did you really interrupt for that?